Hello and welcome to Sunday's Best. Um, I'm going to put my disclaimer out there again. Um, been having a little bit better success with the uh, internet system. And so I'm, I'm praying that tonight it will stay up. But if not, those of you who follow me know that we'll get off and we'll get back on, even if I have to get on with the phone. All right. So how's everybody doing? You know, uh, we are, summer is pretty much gone. And um, we're still having some nice, nice, nice weather. But um, I just wanted to encourage everybody to make the best use of your time. And so tonight, I'm glad that you are spending at least 30 minutes with me. And we're going to do what we normally do. Uh, we're going to uh, do a refresher uh, of uh, what we covered last week. And then tonight's session, get ready, get ready, get ready, is going to be leaving a legacy, making a memory, all right? Focus on the family. So uh, that's gonna be our topic for tonight, leaving a legacy, making a memory, and focus on the family. Last week, uh, we talked about a five-year plan. How many of you have gotten started on your five-year plan? And remember I said, take tiny bites, uh, start with year, uh, with next year, you know, things that you want to accomplish in the next 12 months, but go one to maybe three years and then leave those big, big, big goals that you have to chop away at little by little, um, leave those for, if you can, to uh, year uh, four and five, so you can build up to them. Um, because I know you're gonna make some big goals. And um, sometimes you just have to take uh, small bites, chew on it, and sometimes you have to change it. But that's all right. Uh, if you feel better writing it with the number two pencil, do that. But even if it's with ink, or if you do it on your computer, everything is subject to change. And change can be good. So um, the most important thing, hello, Genevieve, and a few others who are already out there, um, change can be good. So last week we talked about show me your um, plan. And um, when you're doing a plan, I suggest, and then you may do, do it in more than uh, five areas, but the five areas that I put my plans in is physical, what is it, uh, what changes in your body you're trying to make, whether you're trying to get healthier, whether you're trying to lose weight, whether you're trying to gain weight, um, just whatever you're trying to do. Spiritual goals, um, the, the relationship that you have, if you're not uh, really confident that you're close enough um, to God and you wanna draw closer or draw nigh, and uh, you need to maybe um, read and study more or have a prayer partner, then make that part of your spiritual goal. Family goals. Family is so important. Um, and when I'm talking family, um, if you're single, I'm still talking to you because you're part of a family. If you're married, if you're divorced, uh, if you um, are married again or whatever your family dynamics is, um, I'm still talking family, uh, focus on the family. Um, finance is number four. What is it, what amount of money are you trying to save for investment or save for um, your retirement or save for your child's college, um, save for a new car um, because Whatever you need to do, steady plotting brings prosperity. And those of you who have been to the Crown Ministry class, you know that scripture about steady plotting. Just keep doing a little something here and there. Um, number five, professional or career goals. And if you're still in the work world, or if you're just beginning your career, you certainly wanna plan your moves. Um, because just know that um, every day you get up, you make a choice. But there's a devil that gets up every day and tries to 
uh, get in your mind, get in your head, uh, be your friend, um, and they also make a plan for you. So goals are so very important. So if you've got plans for 2025, and I'm going to tell you the relevance of, of, of that in a few minutes from something we experienced in the past as a family. But if you've got goals for the next five years, and let's just say you start with five in each category and you add a couple, and maybe you take one off, maybe it's not as important as it was, or maybe you realize that goal a lot quicker or sooner than you thought, and you won't need two or three years to do it. And so on four, year four and five, you really be operating big and feeling good about it. So with the review from last week, the five minute review, here's what I say. If I can see your plan, I can see your future. If I can see your plan, I can see your future through your eyes. So make sure that you do write your goals and your plans down. It's very important. Don't get up every morning trying to wing it and say, uh, whatever happens today is meant to happen today. Well, that could be true too. Um, if you put it on paper, if you put it in your mind, if it's part of your daily activities, that's what's meant to happen. So, um, you know, don't, don't, don't try to make excuses. Try to wake, make uh, winning moves. So tonight, as I said, we're going to talk about legacy. And I read a few things, and then I'm going to share a few things from um, our personal experience. Um, and I will get into uh, my family, uh, the Fulton family, some of the things that we have done, as well as some of the things that we've personally done here in the Johnson household. And I know you have your story as well. And so what we're going to talk about is legacy. Uh, what it is and what it can be and what it will be, whether you do anything about it or not, you're going to have legacy. You may as well um, plan it, make it intentional, and um, have some good results because you're going to leave a legacy. If you're born, you live, you die, what lies between the, your dash is going to be your legacy. So um, it says leaving a legacy isn't a choice. The kind of legacy you leave, though, is up to you. In Proverbs, and, and since we're talking about Sunday's best, in case I forgot to say that, today's Sunday's best um, for you and your family. It says in Proverbs 13 and 22, King Solomon wrote, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, a grandchild's inheritance which is a grandparent's legacy, was important enough for the wisest man in the world to mention. So nothing new under the sun. Um, legacy has been planned. It's been part of the plan from the very beginning. It says, but what do these words mean for you or me? To find the answer to this question, you need to carefully think about all uh, think about what we will leave behind once we meet God face to face, especially if we have grandchildren. After all, we, after all, what we pass along to them might have an impact not only on their lives, but also on the lives of their children and grandchildren. So what is legacy? What is legacy? It says, like death and taxes, leaving a legacy in an area of your life where you really don't have a choice. You don't have a choice about legacy. I bet you never thought about that. There are probably some people that didn't get on this call tonight because they thought that when I said we were going to talk about legacy, we're going to talk about all the things that we're going to leave financially. Yes, that's a great part of it um, because anything that you... Um, plan to do in the future that you would love for your loved ones to do, it's almost going to take money. All right. So um, let's see. 
it says all too often people tend to think of legacy in terms of only money but it's also an experience it's also uh about a mindset um, it says unfortunately it's a mistake to only think in terms of money and then it says consider the proverbs what proverbs um, 13 and 22 has to say about it along with the words of jesus and paul concerning truth um, and it said the truth the truth about wealth when you read these verses together you can read uh, matthew 6 19 and 20 and first timothy 6 uh, verses 6 through 10 and it and then you realize that um, to build healthy values virtues character and um also the material things that you can leave your children all of that is called legacy um so how do you do that as a family um spending quality time together having teachable moments spending quality time together having teachable moments none of that was about money but we're going to talk about how money has a big role to play in it it says if you are still working and even if part of your goal is to leave a financial legacy remember that the time you spend with your family is the most important time you can spend. Your involvement in life could have extern could have eternal impact on their souls, which is the outcome you'll never regret. So um, if you can, um, in legacy, build a spiritual um, ground, grounding for your a child while they're young and watch them grow into being good citizens good christians good people um, a good person then you are leaving a legacy it says um model and teach what's important prayer focus and relationship and time teach your child how to do these things speak life into your family into your small your baby your they said we should start talking to our babies be infants before they arrive um and uh you'll have a better relationship so you speak life into your family whether you have a teenager that's going through it and lord knows if they're going through it you're gonna go through it um and into your grandchildren you have to speak life into their situation. Share what you have learned along the way. Pass along the knowledge from your life so that it can transfer that wisdom into your child's life. And that is called legacy as well. Watching for opportunities. Now, last week and the week before, I've been using my new um, word, woo, W-O-O, Windows of Opportunity. And when I research uh, legacy, it talks about that as well. It says, watching for opportunities. How can you leave a good legacy? The answer is simple as it is challenging. You need to learn how to balance intentionally with grace. In other words, have a deliberate plan. We talked about that two, a one to five year plan. Have a deliberate plan, be flexible. I said, you may have to change some things. Um, it's often said that values are, are caught rather than taught uh, because your family, your children are watching what you do. Uh, when they know that it's a critical time and you find your corner and you pray, or you said, Lord, help us through this, they see that. And that's leaving a legacy of faith, letting them know that uh, faith is important. Um, it says, get together with uh, on special occasions and there the invitations and the activities should be, uh, will give you enough opportunity to enjoy your children 
and your grandchildren. Share your heart with them. So a lot of this is about talking, uh, being around each other. It says time is of the essence. If you've never, if you're never around your grandchildren, you, if you're never around, your grandchildren won't have the chance to catch anything from you. They need to be able to see who you are and what you hold as important to you. All right, so this is some great information. And I'll end it with saying, um, and if you feel the legacy you've created for your grown children is lacking, know that it's never too late to start over and reestablish a connection. All right, so um, great information, great information. And um, times change. Um, we're in a, a real experience right now with, uh, you know, change in, in what we're trying to do. But sometimes some things need to stay the same, <clears throat> such as manners, such as family uh, traditions, um, back to, you know, the basics. Some of those things are ways that we can certainly uh, view legacy. And I'm going to share <clears throat> 10 tips, 10 ways to leave a legacy in 2020 and make it a great one. Okay, so we think of 2020 of all that we've been through or all that we're still going through, but 10 ways that we can leave a legacy still in, in, in the chaos. It says, number one, contribute beyond yourself. Make, your, make yourself I'm sorry, make your life for someone and something other than yourself, all right? So it's not all about you. What you do and what you leave should be also um, about someone else. Speak for yourself, speak over yourself, and when you're gone, others will speak on what you meant to them. Number two, the word create. Write a book, sing a song, draw out your feelings. A lot of us are really good at expressing ourselves through art, but that's not me. Um, but there are some people that are really good at expressing themselves um, with art. And uh, Gloria says, besides the picture on the wall, write. Uh, you want to leave the picture on the wall, but you want to leave um, some legacy too, some substance behind it. So uh, create a book, sing a song, draw a picture, design your future. Um, there, there's just so much you can do to leave legacy. Um, and you'll be surprised sometimes the notes that people leave behind or the lesson that they leave behind uh, for you to learn are for you to grow from. Number three, be a role model. Yes, you be a role model. Um, it says for those around you, teach others to do too. Don't you just do and get the big head and think that you've arrived. Even if you have, reach back and try to help somebody else. So be a role model, help other people to grow spiritually um, set an example for the next generation. That was number three. Number four on ways to leave a legacy, even in a um, pandemic, raise your child well. Sometimes I know we all do what we think is right. And um, with the new parents, um, they some don't believe in spanking their child. But the, the word says, that sometimes that board of correction, and as they used to say, Mr. Green used to say, the board of education will teach you something. That meant that you went into his office and you got a little paddling 
and it had the hand carved into it so they could really get to you. All right. And so um, raise your child as best you can uh, with morals and with manners. The old folks say manners will carry you where money won't. So you can leave a lot of money for your child and they can blow through it. Or you can leave a business for them and they can care less about it. But if they have good manners, somebody will pull them aside and say, son or daughter, um, you know, come over here. You, ne you need to learn a little something about this. You, I saw your parents work really hard to, to get this. And I think you ought to take a little note. Uh, I think you can do a little bit better. Um, maybe I can help you out because I've been, I've been here before. All right. So if you don't make um, your children honorable, they will be dishonorable. Okay. And in all we try to do, never stop because God never gives up on us. So we should never give up on our children, but make sure that you raise them with good morals. And that is a legacy in itself. Number five is love. Learn um, the legacy of love. Express your love daily to your families, your friends, strangers, and even the enemies who aren't so good to you. You still have to love them. Number six, give. Be a generous person. Um, a closed hand, uh, you may think you're keeping everything in, but remember, it works the opposite way. You'll never get anything in with a closed hand, even if somebody's trying to give you something. So this is the ultimate law of the universe. The ultimate law of the universe is to give. It's a very effective way to leave a legacy. Be willing to share knowledge and, and experience. And in your giving, um, let people know how much you care, not necessarily about how much you got. Let them know that you're willing to give them something and uh, let them know that you care. No matter what the situation is, you should wake up and be glad that you have been given another opportunity. So generosity, it comes, what comes around goes around. Um, and give without expecting something in return. Number seven, do good. Good deeds are always remembered. That's a legacy. When your child or your friend or your neighbor or your classmate can say, you are such a good person, and they can say that uh, to your face, and then they can go and talk to somebody else, say, you know what? That person is such a good person. Um, I remember when they did this, or remember when they said that, and they didn't have to, all right? Number seven, good deeds are always remembered <clears throat> such as a smile. When you share a smile and when you say to somebody, have a good day, mean it. Don't just say it as a matter of routine or out of habit. Mean what you say. Number eight, inspire. If you are, if you found your passion, if you have what you want, if you've achieved some major goals in life, be content and be happy, but inspire somebody else, okay? Oh, don't forget to stop now and then and share your success secrets with others. And I'm gonna end up with some of that on here. Um, today in the pandemic, people need to be reminded about their potentials. So when you see something good in a person, a good trait, a good characteristic, say something good, compliment them, edify them. That can mean the world of difference and you will be leaving a legacy for someone other than a person in your family. Remember to inspire, remember to encourage, to be the motivator and remember, be remembered as the one that left a good legacy. Number nine, volunteer. It's good for your mental health. It's good for society. It's good for your community. It makes you feel good and it leaves you in a good place in the legacy line. You'll feel amazing by volunteering. 
And uh, number 10, make a family history. Make history. Research your family tree. Write a book about it if you feel like it. Do a documentary. Leave your mark for generations to come. All right, so that part um, is what I wanted to share with you tonight. But here's what the special part. Um, I'm a part of the uh, Fulton family. And for many, many, many years, we have made it our business to get together. And we started over 25 years ago. And so um, I said to uh, my cousin Genevieve, I said, we should have no lack. We should have no reason to come up empty handed. Um, and I am thinking back to a particular session that we had at Myrtle Beach. And you all may have heard this before, but if not, there were about 36 of us, including children. We got down there on a Friday midday. We had um, some sessions that, that had a session that night. We went out to dinner and we came back and we hammered it out after dinner. Then we worked all day with our little flip charts and everything. This was before the computer days. And um, we, um, we had people there from Columbia, from Atlanta, from Florence, from King Street. Um, not sure where else, but we had people there. And the young people, I reached out to a few of the younger, well, they're in their 40s now, today, to ask them what they remembered about that experience or some of the lessons that we taught them as parents, as aunts, as uncles, as cousins about legacy and about finance. And... Um, when we were at that event, um, even since then, some of the, the little ones were seven, eight years old, maybe 10 years old. Uh, they are now grown and gone and they're doing their own thing. But as I recollect uh, what some of the things that we talked about, we talked about real estate. Uh, we talked about getting a good education. Um, some of them have their masters, some have their doctorate. Um, but as I counted, I believe that there's at least six of them at the time when we did the workshop, I was the only one with a real estate license. Okay. I believe there's six of us in the family now with real estate license. That makes me feel really good. And the other thing that makes me feel better is they're doing an exceptional job at it. They're loving it, all right? So that's great. Um, we had a couple of the young men that presented. They had a um, car, um, what was it? Uh, uh, it was called Zoe's Air, air freshener, car air freshener. That was one business. They had a... Um, right now, I think it's Pelican is doing uh, a whole lot with snow cones. And um, back in the day, um, the Cooper brothers had theirs, and I think they were like a dollar, maybe a dollar fifty. Pelican's, I think now is about five dollars, um, and they're not much larger. We've had um, some to um, go to school. Um, we've had. Uh, some to be engineers, others to be just great parents, um, others to have opened um, their own adult care businesses. And, and I know I'm leaving out, oh, um, a reception hall, um, construction companies, real estate companies. And so the things that we talked about and we took it from, we first did one in Columbia we did it in Hilton Head. We did it in uh, Myrtle Beach and um, even at a couple of our homes. So we have been trying to teach this concept for a great while now. And what I asked, um, I'm gonna read a couple of the um, responses that I got from the young people before um, 
we closed just to show you that the information I researched and the information they sent me is really lining up. All right. Um, I got this one from um, Craig Askew in um, Charleston. And he said, my thought on um, legacy building. And he said, um, share the vision more often with young people and old people. All right. Because you can learn a lot from the, what the old people have to share. And you can teach a lot um, to the young people from what you're sharing and what they can hear from the older people. Um, he said also extra large family retreats focusing on family businesses and Christian values. Make it fun and make it tangible. All right. So I know you heard some of that in uh, what I read uh, about um, family legacy in the um, in 2020. Then I got this one from Charleston from uh, Tiffany. And it says, um, it's a powerful subject, leaving a legacy. And uh, thank you, Craig. Thank you for, for that information. Thank you for getting on Marva. And um, this one is from Tiffany. She said, you first learn from those who have met their goals and achieve things that you desire. Take notice of what they did to become successful, as well as the mistakes they made uh, in the process, but they made it to the other side, all right? And she, her um, takeaway from being in all of the, the sessions and hearing it from, um, from uh, her parents, uh, my husband and I, it says, take tithing seriously. We heard about giving. Take tithing seriously. Number two, play the rat race game. That's a game by Robert Kiyosaki. And remember it said you should always be learning. Uh, learn the basic concepts. Teach the basic concepts of investing in real estate and in stocks uh, to your children. She said, Ashley has been playing this game for a very long time. So the rat race will tell you, getting out of the rat race tells you that you need real estate, something that creates a passive income. So to all the six uh, members of this family that uh, have their license and to those who um, are in school to get their license, know that um, you're onto something good. Number three, Tiffany says, Using others' gifts to contribute when you don't have the uh, income to invest, um, you can either see the vision to help them, um, you can do artwork, draw out how it should be, uh, you can learn to stage, and you can plan creatively to help assist somebody. And she's learned that over the years um, when you don't have any money, you use sweat equity to get in on um, some investments. Number four, teach your child about finances. You teach them about everything else. Teach them about finances. And like they can get on that phone and look up other things. They can look up some finance information as well. So teach them about financing, finances and investments um, by watching and participating in your business if you have a business. So yes, children have talents. They have gifts too. Let them, allow them to use their gifts to generate income. Number five, don't spend more than you make. All right, so that was from Tiffany. Um, then I got one from um, Atlanta, from uh, Damon. And at the time when we had the session um, 25 years ago, I'm, I'm sure it is, uh, or around that time, Damon had already started uh, into real estate, but they, he and his wife have gone on to do some amazing business, um, business building uh, deals and business ventures. But he and a friend came down and they were talking to us about what it was. I believe the young man's name, uh, I think it was Al, um, but they were telling us about some ventures that they were about to get into or just had gotten into in Atlanta. 
and we were comparing the 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 tri cities then what how you could do that in king street what would the effect be how you could do it in florence what the effect would be and how you could do it in columbia and how different the rental markets and the price of homes of real estate was in each um and um and and we had um damon and his friend from atlanta ernest and his family from atlanta uh the coopers um johnson's um, Burgess's, uh, Ravnell and uh, his family were there. And so Damon, here's what Damon wrote. He said, hello, I think what I learned is to work hard and smart. Save your money and invest money. Let the money you make, make money for you. That's what I say, Damon. I just allowed my, he says, um, I just allowed my oldest son to do a joint venture with his mother so that he could see that real estate pays. I told him, son, if he, if you do this a couple of, if you do just a couple of deals a, a year, you'll be making as much as a teacher. And um, that is some wisdom and that is some leg legacy to leave. And I don't think his oldest son is any more than maybe 11 or 12 years old. Um, and it says, hopefully the, the youth learns early to be in a better position for the future. And so this is just from three young people in our families that um, have gone on to do great things. And from um, the feedback that I'm getting from them, um, hello, Sandra. Um, the feedback that I'm getting from them is in order for us to continue a legacy, you know, remember I said some things you, um, you change and some things you drop and some things you need to keep. We have kind of pushed these meetings aside, um, but I'm hearing from everybody that is going through tough times right now is I wish I would have known sooner. I wish I would have learned how to save. I wish somebody had taught me. Nobody told me, I didn't know. And so that's what brought to mind that I needed to share some experiences. Uh, we're not Einsteins, uh, we're not Rockefellers. Uh, we're just common people who grew up poor and had people to pour into us, to tell us, like Damon said, hard work. And to tell us that if you give God his portion, um, you know, everything else um, will, will start to fall in line. But hard work, hard work is so very important. Um, your young people, um, they want everything quick and easy. Show them a part of the good life, but also show them what it took and what it will take for them to keep that legacy going and going and going and going. So um, I thank you all so much, 40 minutes uh, tonight, and we didn't have any interruptions. So I'm glad that you got the message and um, legacy building is so important. Share this video on your Facebook page tonight. Share this video and um, anybody hearing the video that want to know more about how to teach their children, um, how to build legacy, by all means, give me a call. Area code 803-269-7561. Some things you just need to keep simple. You need to build a foundation. And if you have the opportunity to take one of Dave Ramsey's courses and Chris Hogan, um, or if you have the chance to uh, participate in the crown ministry class. Um, I may do something on crown ministry next year uh, online uh, because it talks about all the 2,350 scriptures in the Bible on wealth, on prosperity, on riches, and on blessings. So with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in to Sunday's Best. And I wish the best for you and your family um, have a good day, have a good night, have a good week, have a great life, and remember, build a legacy. You can't leave what you don't own. 
And you can't leave in the mind of a, a young person something that they don't see, hear, or see you doing. So be a good example. Remember, they said, you're going to leave a legacy. You choose which one you leave, whether it be a good one, a bad one, a poor one, or one of prosperity. And I pray that it is one of prosperity, one that is good, good for you, good for the soul, and good for the world. Have a good night.